Where's the most hostile place you've been, Phil? Gaza. Was that? Yeah, yeah, the horrendous. And not because... Still a lot of shit going down now. Yeah, yeah, it's horrendous. But not be because you couldn't get out of there. Once you were in, you were in. So we got, you know, we got, we got attacked in Gaza and we managed to escape the people that were attacking us. We couldn't, in the, couldn't escape Gaza. We had to go and hide. You know, we ended up hiding in a, in a safe house type place. Yeah, horrendous place. Horrendous because... Like I say, you couldn't escape. You couldn't. You couldn't even run to the wall, because if you run at that wall, you're going to get shot by the Israelis. Like you know what I mean? So you, there was nowhere to hide in Gaza when we was in there. I mean, we got we got attacked a couple of times in there. It was like, wow, this is insane. Why were you there? Um, I went. I originally went over as part of the UN, and we were training a border force. And they were, you know, they were. They, we were trying to use Palestinians to open the border so that they could get the the, the fruit and vegetables and stuff into the country and out of the country because the, the Israelis didn't trust anything coming and going, so they wanted them brought up to international standards. So, but then Hamas took over, and they executed all these guys that we trained and everybody. They they, they actually sent us, they sent us a video with the guys that we trained and they killed. They even put it to music, like do you know what I mean? Yeah, cheers for that. <laughs> Ridiculous. And so. That was pretty much my time over in Gaza. And then all of a sudden, the, the Israelis, in retaliation for what Hamas had been doing, bombed the power station in a place called Deir al-Bala. And uh, there were some Swedish engineers, and they were the only people in the world that could fix this thing. Nobody else, the, the Gazans couldn't do it, the Israelis couldn't do it. And these Swedish engineers go, well, we're not going in there unless we've got people going with us. The only people that had the accreditation to get back in the country at the time was the team that I'd been on. So we went back in, and that was... That was dangerous because Hamas knew who we were and they knew we'd been training the other side. And so we made sort of like a, we made a cock and ball story up at the end and disappeared out to get some kit and never came back and told them, right, switch it on when we're gone, like, do you know what I mean? And that was it, we got out, but yeah, yeah, that was bonkers. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous place. What do you think the outcome will be with Palestine and Israel? I don't know, I don't know. I, don't, I think that it's, it's, it's such a complicated thing. It really is so complicated. It breaks me. It does break me because you got, extremities on both who are fueling this thing hiding behind normal people normal people Gazans don't want that shit you don't think they want that shit of course they don't want that you know what I mean the average Israeli doesn't want that do you know what I mean so there's so many normal people ensnared in this thing that just this, there just doesn't seem to be a solution to it I don't know what the solution is and to understand anything politically around that part you've got to have a brain like a small planet you've got no chance of it do you know what I mean so yeah, it's just, it, it, it breaks me to see. I don't like to see innocent people suffering, and innocent people are suffering again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can see that the media can portray the world the way they want to. The media they do, and the media part. don't help with some of this stuff no. either because they blow up one side or the other, and it's biased in this way. And they say they're not biased, and it, it, it all comes across. It, 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 yeah. I don't know. It's just. It's all messy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the media don't help any of this stuff. Were you a mercenary as well, Phil? Not in the sense. I was going over into these countries to topple governments or anything like that, but I suppose you could you could argue that, you know, I picked up arms for other countries, so in that respect, I was a mercenary. But, yeah, I don't, I don't class myself as a mercenary. I just earned a few quid in and out. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you do it all for? About 15 years. So when I got out of the regiment, for about 15 years, I was in and out. And I ended up doing the anti-piracy stuff in the Gulf of Aden and all that sort of stuff, so... And that again, I mean, if I spent five years at sea, I probably spent five minutes with pirates. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So a lot of time sat there with me top off getting brown. 